Rebuilding a model steam plant. This one is part seven. Cleaning the engine mounting plinths, ready for painting. Machining a groove in the piston to fit a silicone o-ring. Repacking the glands on the cylinder cover and steam chest, then refitting the piston to the crosshead. This clip shows the three mounting plinths on the actual board, and at the moment the dynamo is fastened to one of them. The brass mounting bolts for the dynamo go all the way through the plinth and all the way through the wood into nuts underneath. It seemed like a bit of a long way around to fit the dynamo to the plinth, but at least the dynamo is never going to come loose. These mounting plinths are cast in some sort of resin, and they're very good indeed. This mounting plinth is a support for the number 10V. I like the design where the centre part of the plinth is a reservoir to trap the oil, which after a while runs out of the metal tube at the right hand side into one of these special removable small reservoirs. In this clip I'm cleaning away all of the old oil from the centre part and as you can see the whole thing is quite dirty and the brickwork is very sticky indeed. Somehow, over the years, the oil has attacked the paint on the bricks. Once upon a time, these bricks were the same colour as the reservoir in the middle. Each of the engines and the dynamo are fastened through these plinths all the way into the wood. The two engine mounting plinths use really long wood screws, and when I removed these, unfortunately, the plinths were firmly stuck to the wood. I'm going to have to think about the best way to remove them. I think I'll diversify for a moment and go up to the other workshop where my lathes are to do a bit of machining. In exactly the same way as I did with the S50s, I need to machine a groove in this double 10 v piston which is a bit larger. And because it's a bit larger but still supported on quite a thin piston rod, I centre drill the end and here I'm supporting it with a live centre, but unfortunately the camera cannot see what's going on. And for the purposes of the video, I backed off the live center and here, using quite a sharp parting tool, I'm machining a groove to take the o-ring. Because this three quarters of an inch in diameter piston is only held by a very thin piston rod, I'm taking very light cuts. I don't want to put too much side pressure on the very thin piston rod that's holding it together. Because the piston itself is pressed very firmly against the jaws of the chuck, I did this using the live centre. It's actually quite well supported. But I'm still being careful. If I destroy this piston, it will destroy the piston rod, so I'll have to make both. And I can do without that. A few years ago, a friend of mine wrote a really lovely song. We recorded the song in my recording studio, and I played the keyboard parts. I remembered the sequence of notes and also the opening line, which went, Taking my time, there's no rush anymore. And over the years, a strange thing has happened. The six notes of the opening sequence, lower my blood pressure and resting heart rate, if when I'm taking my blood pressure, I repeat the six note sequence in my head. What has this got to do with making piston rings? Well, nothing at all. The reason for mentioning it is, when I first became type 2 diabetic, I took my blood pressure very regularly. And recently, I was asked by the doctor to submit home blood pressure readings twice a day for a week. You have to remember that I am not a young man, I am 70 years old, and I am extremely overweight at nearly 20 stones, or 127 kilograms. And my blood pressure is usually about 125 over 75. My resting heart rate is between 57 and 61. And even less if I run the six note sequence in my head when taking my blood pressure. You may be wondering why am I mentioning this? Well, there's a good reason for that. The next video in this series will be a painting video and there are quite a lot of things to paint. So I'm going to create some background music for the painting video using this six note sequence and see if anyone else experiences a lowering of blood pressure and heart rate when listening to it. Anyway, I need to get back to the job. This is a C-spanner, and this C-spanner is designed to adjust fittings like the one on the gland for the piston rod. Really, I could do with buying a set of these, because I can think of one or two other applications. I only actually have this one.
and in no time at all, without any damage whatsoever to the gland nut, it is very easily removed, along with the piston, from the stuffing gland on the lower cylinder cover. Normally I would use an O-ring, but I thought, well, I do have some of this old graphited yarn, so I'm going to pack the gland using this. All you have to do is push the piston and piston rod into the cylinder, wind a few turns of the gland packing material, the graphited yarn, around the piston rod, push it into place using a small screwdriver, apply some steam oil, and then refit the gland nut. Two things to watch for when doing this. If you can't get the threads to engage with the gland, then you've got too much graphited yarn in there. Poke it out and cut a bit off and try again. On the other end of the spectrum, if the gland nut goes too far into the gland, you haven't used enough graphited yarn. This next part of the job is important. You tighten the gland nut until it's really solid and won't tighten anymore. At this stage, the piston rod will not be able to move. So you just slacken it off a little bit until the piston rod goes in and out. It's very important not to pack the gland too tightly, because believe it or not, it will actually score the piston rod. The stuffing gland is different on the steam chest, it's a hexagon nut. But the principle is the same, I'm applying some oil first, then I wind the graphited yarn around the valve spindle, not forgetting to fit the gland nut to the valve spindle first, and this time using a spanner, I tighten the gland nut fully and then back it off slightly. I'm now going to fit the crosshead to the piston rod, and I could have done this while I had the gland nut fully tightened. I'm repeating the process, I've fully tightened the gland nut, which locks the piston rod tightly in place. Then I use a screwdriver right in the centre of the piston, where the slot goes through the steel piston rod. But don't forget, the piston rod is locked in position by the gland, so I don't turn the screwdriver. What I do is fit the crosshead at the other end using my Barco spanner. This clip shows the Barco spanner before I tighten the jaws onto the crosshead. Once the crosshead is firmly in place, slacken off the gland slightly and make sure that the piston rod slides in and out of the gland smoothly. Progress has been made in this episode. The cylinder is now ready to bolt back onto the top of the standard, but some of the parts need painting before I do this. Here is a can of standard cellulose thinners. Please read what it says on the tin. And also, please note I am doing this wrong. You're not supposed to handle cellulose thinners under any circumstances. You need to use it in a very well ventilated area too. And you should really wear rubber gloves, but I don't have any of those. I'm using a cloth with some cellulose thinners applied to it. This is very bad practice and you really do need to wear some PPE. The only good thing I can say about doing it this way is it wipes off the oil from my hands and it also cleans the plinth. But one more time, a health and safety warning, keep yourself away from cellulose thinners at all times. Here I'm using a screwdriver blade to clean out the gaps in the brickwork. Then I decided it was a better idea to use a toothbrush. This really didn't take long at this speed, and in no time at all, the part was clean. The toothbrush idea is marginally better than the cloth idea, because using a toothbrush, you don't get much skin contact with the cellulose thinners. Unless, of course, you clean your teeth with the toothbrush afterwards. The plinths are looking much better now the cellulose thinners has removed years of grime. In the next episode, I will be painting these plinths, as well as the Stuart No. 10V steam engine. Here's a shot of the S50 in position on the plinth, and it's looking good. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.